We'll be discussing in this video an article published earlier today at Market Watch, a subscription publication, where the author, Mark Colbert, correctly notes that the Buffett stock market value indicator is in highly elevated territory. This valuation measure takes the total U.S. stock market capitalization to GDP. The, me the valuation measure is named after Buffett simply because he stated in 2001 that it was, quote, probably the best single measure of where valuations stand at any given moment, end of quote. This indicator and others uh, are not very good at predicting short-term movements in the stock market, but the Buffett indicator did flash a correct sell signal in 2000 when the ratio moved up to 162.5%. There are several long-term charts that track this ratio, and I will cite two of them in the more section below. Between around 1950 to 1996, the percentage was less than 100%, and it's now hovering in the 180 to 190% range, higher than what it was before stocks crashed in 2000, which I have called many times previously, a valuation reset that required a 45% decline in the S&P 500 to bring it within the top range of, of what I would consider to be a reasonable P.E. range. So that is in and of itself sobering, but this time may be different than 2000 or in earlier periods where the stock market had major difficulties. It's always uncomfortable for me to say this time is different since my investment style is partly based on what has happened in the past. There is, a, there is a factual basis, arguably a good one, that supports this time is different uh, when referencing long-term charts that reflect the Buffett indicator and what it would show as a good entry point or a bad entry point uh, in, in making stock investments. I have discussed this topic previously and will be going over it again in my next post. For most of the period covered by uh, a Buffett indicator chart or almost any other uh, valuation metric that goes back 75 or more years, Net profit margins defined broadly as profit as a percentage of ref revenue were on average near 5%, possibly moving closer to 10% at the very peak of an economic expansion and then falling to zero or in negative territory during a recession. That's the kind of environment that I had when I started to invest many years ago. I'm pulling that kind of data out of my memory bank, which is also a potential hazard. Investors could not value companies in that kind of scenario based on peak earnings, knowing that recessions would come and profits for many of these large companies that dominated the S&P 500 would disappear or almost disappear and in many cases turn into huge losses. So there was an averaging of earnings over the economic cycles, which reduced the, the multiple to earnings that investors were willing to pay. That approach still prevails in valuing companies today that are capital and labor intensive like General Motors and are subject to wide and wild swings in profits in response to changes in the economy. Today, many of the largest companies in the S&P 500 have net profit margins that would have been unimaginable when I started to invest or in the 60s or 70s or even into the 80s. Using data from Yahoo Finance, click the statistics tab, I noted that the net profit margin of GM, even in an economic expansion as now, is close to 5%. Of the top Six companies, 
in a total stock market ETF like IYY, where those six companies have a 25% weighting in the total stock market ETF. The profit margins are just extraordinary and would have been unimaginable to me in the 1970s. And here's some, uh, some of the, the, the uh, profit, net profit margins that I wrote down. Microsoft, 36.27%. Apple, 26.16%. NVIDIA, 48.85%. Meta Platforms, 28.98%. Alphabet, Google. 24.1%. And some of the weightings of uh, some of the pro net profit margins of other stocks in the top 20 are Broadcom at 29.93%, MasterCard at 44.6%, Visa at 53.92%, J&J at 47.37%. This does not mean that the stock market will be able to repeat its average annual total return over the past five, 15 years, over the next 15, I seriously doubt that the market will be able to do that. So in that sense, the Buffett indicator is still relevant in predicting long-term future returns compared to the most recent 10 or 15 year period. But it has to be evaluated in context of the financial metri metrics like profit margins, which do look like they're have entered into a permanently higher range than what existed prior to, say, 2010. The range now seems to me to be, on an average annual basis, around 10 to 12 percent. It could dip higher, it could dip lower, but that would be what looks to me like a going forward average annual profit margin for the S&P 500 compared to about one half of that amount when I started to invest and for many decades after afterwards. So you can't uh, predict the future now based on using metrics that have data from a period when profit margins and other financial metrics were more subdued than they are now, and companies are far more susceptible to having their earnings collapse in response to a slowdown in the economy. But the Buffett indicator is still including companies whose profit margins are not that good. So it's not like the entire stock market is, is Microsoft, uh, NVIDIA, and Meta Platforms. There are a lot of companies in there, the S&P 500, that uh, do not have stellar uh, profit margins.